Hello dear students and welcome to Shiksha Mantra once again for a very detailed description of types of sentences. Yes, today we have chosen the topic types of sentences. Now you may ask me why you have chosen such a very easy chapter that we find in almost each and every book in English grammar. But I would tell you one thing very clearly. English grammar is such a subject that you'd have to learn each and every component keenly and with this. I'm going to present types of sentences in such a manner that I can demand from you a very keen interest over the video till the presentation ends and obviously you are going to find something extra something extraordinary that's going to help you tight here for the next few minutes so let's begin our discussion of types of sentences so why should we learn types of sentences actually in writing and speaking there are four basic types of sentences that we use for different purposes and these types are declarative sentences interrogative sentences imperative sentences and exclamatory sentences so these are the four basic types of sentences that you would find almost everywhere over the internet and uh, many of the books but i have added with another type of sentence that i have found very much useful in many other english grammar chapters and this type is called optative sentences so why should we learn them well because we have some clear intention behind learning them these different kinds of sentences in english allow us to express ourselves clearly using a variety of sentences in your writing will add interest and help you get your ideas across effectively to communicate clearly it's important to know the function of each types of sentence so you can make the right choice depending on your purpose so it actually gives you a freedom a freedom on what a freedom on your speech and a freedom on your writing skill so if you are a student or you want to create your skill in english language whether in written form or in spoken form it doesn't matter much but if you want to produce a rich language which uh, uh actually sounds very much uh, rich and very much juicy so you must have a little knowledge of the types of sentences and their uses and that is uh, also our uh, goal today at the same time we must remember that they have their own different structures we must learn recall them too so each and every types of sentence have their own structures and different structures their stories and structures as well so you'd have to remember them and with time you can easily recall them what structure to to use with uh, which types of sentences so we are going to discuss this in a detail so the first of them is declarative sentences now if you very keenly observe what's a declarative sentence a declarative sentence is the most basic type of sentence its purpose is to relay information and it is punctuated with a period so with the declarative sentences what we get we get information we get statement so this is called declarative sentences it's, uh, in some uh, other books you would also find it as assertive sentences so its purpose is narration and it is punctuated with a period so here have some examples the first of them the boy walked home next i love honey he wants to eat cookies but he doesn't know how to make them now if you check these sentences here you'd find that an information is shared through these sentences and we call them declarative sentences 
as you can see these sentences make statements whether of fact or opinion declarative sentences can be simple as in the first two examples or compound as in the final example they can also be in any tense as long as they do their basic job of presenting information this makes them the most common sentence type and here would also have a focus on the simple structure that it gets the basic structure of a sentence s v o how just remember it by s v o for declarative or assertive s v o subject verb object so we call s the subject the verb the object and o the sorry s the subject v the verb and o the object and sometimes you don't get an object in its place rather you would get a complement or nothing else only subject and verb so that's the case for intransitive verbs uh, here we are considering it as transitive verb that's why you'd get svo if the verb is intransitive you'd get svc or sv whatever it may be so this is what we need to learn about declarative sentences so let's uh, shift to the next type and that is interrogative sentences and as you know an interrogative sentence it interrogates it asks questions these are direct questions and they are punctuated with a question mark punctuation is very much important because you must put the right punctuation mark for the right types of sentences when you are in written forms and your intonation would play in your spoken form how suppose for this example the first one why does the sun shine so here you'd have to ask this here your intonation must be like a question if you say why does the sun shine it don't uh, sound like a question so to make it sounds like a question you'd have to pronounce it properly with proper intonation why does the sun sun sign so here you'd get the punctuation vocally and for written forms you would put the interrogation and uh, your your punctuation with the question mark would make it vivid that this is an interrogative sentence there the next one whose dog is that and the other one will sure get to keep all her lottery winnings now if you follow these sentences the first two sentences you'd get that they begin with wh words why who but in the second sentence it begins with a verb well so there's something about it so let's learn this first many interrogative sentences start with question words like how or why so these are the question words but others are yes no questions that begins with the verb instead of the noun so when we produce the sentence with a, a question word like a, a wh word how why whose who etc they are actually information seeking questions for these questions we supply an information but there in some other sentences where the question is asked but it is with a verb it may be do verb it may be have verb be verb or uh, other verbs like the modal auxiliaries so what you get here we get one simple answer for these questions either yes or in no will sherry get to keep all her lottery winnings the answer might be yes or no so these questions are called the yes no questions and the begin with a verb instead of a noun or something else it is important to remember that interrogative sentences still require a noun and a verb to be complete so you just can't use a wh words and nothing else you can do this with the wh word you must put some verb and some noun to make the sense complete and here you'd get the structure v s o that it begins with verb then subject and then object and the same thing happens here as well you might not get an object here or you might get a complement or nothing at all 
but it must be uh, punctuated with a question mark that is very much important and that's your interrogative sentences with wh sentences and yes no questions i think uh, you have got it properly and if there's any problem if you want more clarification regarding this if you want a complete video regarding wh questions and yes no questions do type in the comment section below and we would come here again with a uh, video with a presentation that is totally dedicated to yes no questions and wh questions so let's shift to our next slide which gets imperative sentences and as you know imperative sentences are very typical thing to follow why because in imperative sentences do not simply state a fact but rather tell someone to do something so in interrogative sentences it's not fact rather it's telling someone to do something so telling someone to do something just uh, uh, practice with me repeatedly tell someone to do something tell someone to do something and if you practice this and uh, uh, and you look at the imperative sentences you would remember clearly what's an imperative sentence these can be in form of friendly advice basic instructions or more forceful comments so we are going to uh, get the details through examples the first of them is please shut the door to keep out the bugs and you can see that this is uh, probably a friendly advice or it can be a request as well so a request is also imperative then comes turn left at the bridge so instruction and this is also imperative sentence then comes stop bothering me that's a forceful comments stop bothering me that's a forceful comments and they are also imperative sentences so, so you must remember they can be in the form of a friendly advice or request basic instructions or more forceful comments so advice request comment instructions these are the keywords for intero eh, sorry for imperative sentences and there comes many imperative sentences end in periods that is with full stop but some of the more forceful demands may end in an exclamation so here you'd find that for these two sentences we have used full stop or uh, punctuating them with the period but here it is exclamation why an exclamation point uh, because we want to highlight the emotion so you can identify an imperative sentence because it appears to be missing a subject this is the most important factor here and we are coming to its detail if you check each and every sentence there you you won't find a subject there's no subject is given for these sentences why however the comment of each imperative directed at you making these sentences second person the subject of the sentence may be omitted but it's called you understand because the reader is aware that each sentence could be written as you do this or you do that so why should we repeat you for so many times because one thing is very clear if you have been advised or uh, given some basic instructions or some commands uh, whatever it may be it can be produced by the speaker and it can be accepted by the listener so imperative sentence is surely related to the speaker and the listener so first person to the second person first person to the second person so the first person is asking the second person to do something that's why please shut the door to keep the bugs means please you shut the door to keep out the bugs you turn left at the bridge you stop bothering me so why should we repeat you for so many times so it's better to left to leave these uh, uh, common pronoun that is you for each and every sentence and begins with it a verb so the structure of these sentences are v o verb and object or verb and a complement or sometimes sometimes only verb stop start these can be comments and here we have used only the verb so there you won't find any subject so that's all about imperative sentence 
and here i uh, want to tell you another thing that if you focus on uh, what's uh, there in these types of sentences you'd find that they have relation with the mood so if you haven't uh, gone through the mood uh, there's the video you'd find it in the link check it out and learn it properly and you'd find that the indicative mood deals with declarative and interrogative whereas there's another mood imperative mood that is solely dedicated to imperative sentences so check it out there in the i button uh, uh, above and uh, i can guarantee that it would be very much useful for you so let's uh, shift to the next topic and the next topic is exclamatory sentences exclamation the very name suggests to what exclamatory sentences are exclamatory sentences are like declarative sentences in that they make a statement instead of asking a question but their main purpose is to express strong emotion they are easily recognized because they end in an exclamation point instead of a period so exclamatory sentence is totally point oriented here you do get a, a a point that is the maximum and there you do express a strong emotion for that moment at that particular moment and it would begins uh, we can't say from where you have started gathering that uh, feelings but the sudden burst out of your expression is a particular point how i said i wanted tacos instead of pizza so you were feeling this for quite a good long time and now you have burst it so at that very point at that point exclamation point but here you can see that there is nothing special in this sentence except the one thing that is the note of exclamation and it makes this an exclamatory sentence and then comes how well he sings and here a wh word is used and also the note of exclamation how well he sings so this note of exclamation that is the exclamation point is a very clear indication that the sentence is exclamatory though we must remember that it can also be what it can also be imperative sentence wow he just won a gold medal so here also we get a note of exclamation and this is also an exclamatory sentence and here we have some details about exclamatory sentence notice that each one of these examples contains both a subject and a verb which is still a requirement for a complete sentence exclamatory sentences are often used in casual conversation and in written dialogue to show emotion but they are not typically useful in academic or expository writing in these more serious works it's better to make your point with well written declarative sentences instead so that's a very important tip and i want you to write it down to keep it in your notes and remember it that you must use the declarative sentences more of the declarative sentences when you are in some serious works but these uh, uh, sentences are not uh, very much useful very much fitful for typical academic or expository writing so i have told you now we must remember the types of sentences to get a boost in our use of the language both in written and spoken form but here if you follow this you get that uh, we may come to the conclusion that an in, uh, that an uh, exclamatory sentence can be produced with a wh word like how what what a beautiful sight and also with some note uh, of exclamations and also with some interjections like how of what a bad weather so these are the possible structures of exclamatory sentences and more than that there you can make a very simple expression but with the form of uh, spoken and your note of exclamation it would get exclamatory sentences and one thing is very clear that here you won't find any particular structure sometimes you would find that uh, the verb has been shifted to the, to the end of the sentence for the second example how well he sings the verb has been shifted to the end of the sentence 
and the subject also shifted a bit uh, deeper into the sentence. So these are the characteristics which you must maintain for producing exclamatory sentences. Otherwise, it's very difficult to say which particular structure to be followed for exclamatory sentences. But exclamatory sentences, they are in an exclamation point. So uh, that's a sudden outburst of your strong emotion. And here, a particular structure of sentence is really not possible. That's why we don't get a particular structure of uh, sentences here in exclamatory sentences and then we get yes the last of them which I have chosen specially for you to remember that is optative sentences this sentence which expresses a prayer keen wish curse etc is called an optative sentence this kind of sentence generally starts with may and wish sometimes maybe means hidden as well so here I would uh, uh, produce for you a whole set of examples. May the king of Magad live long, long live the king of Magad. So if you follow these two sentences here, you get the same sentences produced twice with may and without may, with may, without may. So with may as it's possible as well as without may. And there you have many other, may God bless us all, etc, etc. May you uh, become successful enough to buy love. May the Almighty help in, the, in his tragedy. And then comes wish. Wish you a very successful married life. That's also an optative sentence. There comes wish you a happy journey together. So these are the optative sentences. And there's the last one, may your team win the match. So that's all about our types of sentences. But here we have a very important segment. Don't stop it there. Rather, you must continue with this section to get what we finally learned from types of sentences. Yes, using different sentence types in your writing. And I have told you now, this is the most important factor which we must learn from here from this presentation. And this is our goal. This is our key to success in producing sentence beautifully in our spoken and written forms. The declarative sentences are by far the most common sentence type. They can lead to child writing if used exclusively. Take the following paragraph as an example. I'll show you how to make a snowflake. Paper snowflakes are easy to make and can even get addictive. Once you learn the techniques, the steps outlined below will help you get started. So now if you uh, check this, you'd get that every time in each and every occasion for each and every sentence I've used declarative sentences. So that's the first point. You must remember this. All three of these sentences are declarative. So the piece begins to sound little flat. By contrast, to see what happens when a variety of sentence types are used instead. So when we are using different types of sentences, we're mixing them together. Are you ready to learn how to make snowflakes? Look, it's not so flat. It has become what? It has become very much powerful. Paper snowflakes are easy to make, but be careful. They can get addictive once you learn the basic techniques. Follow the steps below to get started. So you may find out when I have mixed the things together, different types of sentences together, what happens? It changes the whole game. It makes it very much powerful. The flat expression, the flat explanation, the flat information sharing mode has been shifted to dynamic speech-like quality. And if you use this in your uh, writings uh, like composition and stories and uh, also in uh, your uh, debate topics, you are going to get a lot out of this learning. That is the types of sentences. And there, finally, as you can see, the paragraph have used one of each of the sentence types and the result is a more interesting piece. This is appropriate for writing with a casual, friendly tone and many works of creative writing. Be careful with the more formal writing. In the case of expository writing, 
declarative sentences are the most appropriate choice so when you are writing down a formal letter when you are writing down a notice obviously their declarative sentences are preferable there you can't do such a thing that we have done with the last slide and here i'm going to make things sum up with the bottom line and what's the bottom line using the right type of sentence in your writing depends on your intention intention of what to relay information or to answer a question use a declarative sentence you may write them down to ask a direct question choose an interrogative sentence to tell someone what to do use an imperative sentence to show extra emotion use an exclamatory sentence but as a rule of thumb these should be used sparingly your writing will benefit from a clear understanding and correct usage of all four types of sentences so that's all we are going to have a fun with our next presentation so till then bye bye happy learning